Physiology. So today in this class we are going to study about excretion and homeostasis in a living organism. So let's begin first of all by the definition of terms. What is excretion? So excretion is the process whereby living organisms separate and eliminate waste products from their bodies. So if these waste products have, are left in the body, they will poison the cells. If they poison the cells, the cells are going to die. So that gives us the basis of the explanation of excretion, whereby this is the process whereby living organisms separate and eliminate waste products from their bodies. So these waste products that are released from the bodies of living organisms mainly include, first of all, we have the nitrogenous waste. So after the nitrogenous waste, we have different mineral salts that we are going to look at, including sodium, including calcium, including magnesium, etc. Apart from that, we are going to look at tannins, resins, quinine, uh, mira, etc., etc. So we are going to look at the different waste products that plants release from their bodies. So you see that these products must be eliminated immediately from the body because if they have been left to, to stay in the bodies of these living organisms, they are going to poison the cells of the body, including the body cells that are somatic cells, including the white blood cells, if uh, we are talking about uh, the mammals, etc., and also the plant cells. So they are going to poison the different cells and the different essential bacteria that are in the bodies of this living organism. So you see that some of the metabolic processes in the body release heat. If they release heat, this will alter the normal body temperature of the, of the specific organism. Like as well, we see that some metabolic processes in the body, they alter the pH of the body. So if they alter the pH of the body, this will then affect the acidity and the basicity of the internal environment of the organism. Therefore, by this, it leads us to the next definition of term whereby now we we have homeostasis so what is homeostasis so basically homeostasis this is the maintenance of a constant internal environment that is the definition of homeostasis this is the maintenance of an internal constant environment so let's say for example uh, for example someone has been running so after the action of running um, or rather, in the process of running, these people sweat. So why is it that after an athlete or in the process of running by an athlete, they do sweat? So this athlete will sweat because the body wants to bring the temperatures back to 37 degrees Celsius, which is the normal body temperature. So the reason why this person sweats is so that if the sweat is deposited on the skin, then there is some cold air which will pass on the surface of the skin whereby sweat is deposited, it will bring a cooling effect. So since there will be a cooling effect, therefore, the body temperatures of the person who is running will be brought back to 37 degrees Celsius if they were elevated. So that is exactly what happens in, uh, in homeostasis. So as well, uh, the other example of homeostasis you can see in a sense that if you are hungry, so the brain will bring sensation of hunger. So if the brain brings that sensation of hunger, that person who is hungry will go to look for food in order to bring the conditions back to normal and eliminate the sense by which or eliminate the feeling by which they are feeling hungry. Because if you feel hungry, you'll feel like eating. If you feel thirsty, because that is also homeostasis, if you feel thirsty, you'll go and find water to drink that water in order to bring the body conditions back to normal. So that is basically homeostasis. This is the maintenance of an internal constant body environment. So apart from homeostasis, let's also define the other term, which is ingestion. So what is ingestion? So you see that ingestion, this is the removal of undigested food materials from the body. So don't confuse this with excretion. So excretion is just the removal of uh, metabolic waste materials from the body. But if we speak about ingestion, ingestion basically, this is the removal of undigested. So after the process of digestion, so the undigested food materials, if we remove them, that is ingestion. So ingestion again, this is the process of uh, whereby undigested food materials are removed from the body. So these undigested food materials, they leave the body as feces, whereby someone may go to the washroom to take a long call. 
So the process by which the feces are removed from the body, that is a gestion, removal of undigested food materials from the body. So apart from that, let's look at the definition of another term. Let's now look at secretion. What is secretion? So basically, secretion is the release of certain useful substances produced by the cells. That is secretion. So examples of these substances secreted uh, by, the, by the cells include the different hormones in the, we have in the blood, in the body. Also, we have the different enzymes, example, renin, pepsin, tylene, amylase enzyme, etc. Uh, after that, we have the oxalates, we have the sebum, we have the mucus that are also used in digestion process and also in the gut for smooth passage of food down from the mouth towards the stomach. So, this, uh, the release of certain useful substances by the cells or the tissue or dif different glands, that is what is referred to as secretion. So, we don't say that the cells are removing enzymes. Or, we don't, it is not right, or, like, it is not good to say the cells are producing enzymes. It is good and it is accurate biologically to say the cells are secreting the different enzymes, cells are secreting the different mucus, cells are secreting the different products. So really much in biology avoid saying the cells are producing or the cells are removing. So the best term to use is the cells are secreting this or that. So apart from that, let's now look at the definition of the other term, which is an exudate. So what is an exudate? So in short, exudate is what is called in Kiswahili maira. That is what is referred to as the exudate. So uh, we see that an exudate is a fluid that leaks out of the blood vessel into the nearby tissues. So that fluid that is leaking from the blood vessel and into the surrounding tissues of the body, that is what is referred to as exudate. So for the exudate, we see that these are fluid made up of mainly dead cells, proteins, and some solid materials. So the dead cells, the white blood cells that were trying to fight an infection and then they lost the fight, so those are the ones that will die and then will be deposited in the exudate awaiting for removal from the body. So we have different cells, we have proteins, we have some solid materials. So for this exudate we see that the exudate mainly may ooze from cuts or from different parts of infection in the body. Like for example, as you can see, the doctor is trying to remove some exudate from the leg of the patient. So that is what is referred to as an exudate. So like it may ooze out from, uh, from places whereby the person has been cut or places of infection or inflammation. So the other name of exudate can also be called pus. So the normal term that most people use out here, they call it pus. But the biological term for pus is exudate. The normal term that we talk about out here is called myra. So if you know myra, you're going to know what is pus. If you know pus, you're going to know what is an exudate. Biology.